welcome back to my channel. Are you guys ready for your daily dose of melanin? Okay, great. So first, click, um, I don't really know what a button is anymore, but wherever that button is that says subscribe, click it. And then if it's at the bottom, what is this, left-hand corner? I'm in med school, don't know my left from my right, but don't mind me. Wherever the button is, if you move over a little bit, you'll see the, the thumbs up button. Click that too. All right, so let's get into this medical school application process. So I'm doing this video because I know when I was going through this process, what, like two years ago, it was a lot and I felt like at every step I was like, wow, I wish I knew what this was gonna look like. Um, I definitely had some people helping me out, but I'm just making this so I can help you guys out from an earlier stage and help prepare you for what happens next. So let's get into it. First, I'm gonna start off by doing some general um, statements about the med school application process. So one, it takes about a year to apply to medical school, a whole year. So if you don't want to take a gap year or a gap year is when you have a break between um, undergrad and going to med school, if you wanna go straight through, you need to apply in your junior year. You need to apply in your third year of college because as I said, it takes a whole year to apply. Um, if you want to take gap years, then you can apply in your senior year or whenever else. And then the earliest that you can apply for med school at any given year is June 1st of that year. That is when the application service opens. And if you guys want, you like this video, I can actually do a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to go through the AMCAS application system and figure all that out because it's kind of tedious. When you're applying to med school, there, there are three main steps. So you have the primary application, you have the secondary application, and then you have, hopefully, interviews. So I'm going to first start off by talking about some of the things that you need in order to get your application started. So during college, you have certain classes that pre-med classes or the pre-med track that you need to take in order to even be considered for medical school. So you need a year of biology, you need a year of chemistry, you need a year, well it depends on the school, but usually a year of organic chemistry. Some schools are changing that now, so they're doing half a year of organic chemistry and then you can do another half year of biochemistry. Um, you need some type of math depending on the school again. So this is why it's important to research the schools that you wanna to go to. You need either calculus or you need statistics and some schools need both. Nowadays, you also need um, social sciences classes. So you need a class in psychology and you need a sociology class. And the last class you need is physics. So it's about like eight classes that you need. Um, and some of them are year long. So just be aware of that if medicine is something that you are interested in doing. And this also applies to other graduate schools as well. So I know dental school usually needs these classes. And I know that PA school, physician assistant school, usually needs these classes as well. The other things that you need outside of your taking the classes is you need some type of clinical experience. Now, this doesn't mean you need to drop everything and go, you know, volunteer in a hospital all day, every day, or be an EMT, or be a scribe, or do, you don't really need to go hard and do all of that at once. But you do need to show the schools that you have been exposed to this field and you're sure like, okay, this is something that I'm interested in because I have seen it. It's not just something I watch on TV or I heard about, but I've been exposed to this field hands on and I can see it and yes, this is what I wanna do. So there are a number of ways to do that. You can do all the stuff that I said before, but there are other ways that you can do that as well. You can even do research um, and you can get involved in other ways. The other two things you need are the MCAT, well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't really know if you need that anymore. You probably do, but this whole COVID situation is changing a lot of things, so stay tuned. But just for right now, put it in your mind that you need the MCAT. They may change that at a later date, or that may be shifted a little bit. And one thing to note about the MCAT is that you have to pay for it. It's about 300 and something dollars. 
almost $400 and that price might have gone up from when I took it. So that is something that you wanna keep in mind that you're gonna pay for. And usually the MCAT takes anywhere from three months to even a year to study for. It all depends on your study schedule and when you feel comfortable with taking the exam. And then the last thing that you really need before getting your application started is letters of recommendation. Now, this to me is the most, I, I don't wanna say tedious, this is the part of the application that you can least control. So my advice for this is to get that done early. If you're a freshman and you're watching this video, make sure from your freshman year, you're starting to cultivate those relationships with professors or whoever to start writing those letters of recommendation because it's the, it's the hardest thing when you're in your third year, your fourth year or whatever, or even if you left school and you're like, wait, I need how many letters? What? Do I even know anybody who's gonna write this for me? So you wanna start building those relationships in mind so that you can get these letters done. And I always say, even if it's like a year before you're gonna apply, start priming those people saying like, hey, I'm interested in medical school, would you be willing to write a letter of recommendation for me? Now, normally you'll need anywhere from three recommendations or more. Some schools want a committee letter. And what that means is a lot of schools will have a pre-med or pre-health um, advisory staff. And so the schools want all the individual letters compiled um, by your pre-med staff or your pre-advisory staff into one letter. Now, each school has a different process of this. Each school has a different way that you have to go about it. So make sure that you're checking in with your school as soon as possible to avoid any road bumps. I personally had my letters of recommendation done like two years before I actually applied to school, but I was wild and don't, don't be like me, just, just prepare, it's okay. All right, so once you do that and we're actually starting off with the primary part of the application, we're putting in all of those things that we mentioned. So the MCAT, your grades, we have a personal statement, which is a statement on why medicine about yourself telling them about yourself on paper because they're not going to see you until the interview so what about you is you know unique or interesting to them for them to want to call you in and learn more about you i could definitely do another video about the three things that are super important to a personal statement if you guys want so make sure you write in the comment box below all right so we got the personal statement in there and then we also have a space for experiences. So usually there are up to 15 experiences that you can put in here. And these are just experiences. It doesn't have to be all medical. It could be if you worked at, you know, H&M or if you were a waitress or you babysat or whatever it is. But these are just experiences to show the medical schools these are the skills that I have learned doing these jobs or these things, whether it can even be studying abroad um, or research or whatever the case is, but these are the skills or these are the things that I have learned that will help me to become a physician. And that is the most important thing to convey in your application, why you can be an asset to a school and how you can be a great physician. All right, so once you do all of that, um, you're going to have to pay for it because you have to pay for everything. It's it's life. So you pay usually for each school that you apply to. I think the first three schools is a set price and then every school after that is like $40. Um, Might have gone up from when I did it, but you have to pay for usually for each school that you do. So you send that off, um, I would say as early as possible. So I did like June 2nd, I was ready to go in there and then you have like a panic attack for a week or so and then you calm down. Um, and then you're waiting for a few weeks to about a month, the end of June, early July, the schools that you apply to will be sending out secondary applications. Now, each school is different. Some schools send out these secondary applications to everybody, and some schools are very selective. If you don't make it past the first round, they won't send you a secondary application. So just check out what the school that you are um, applying for, what their policy is on that. 
Once you receive the secondary, it is usually um, an open-ended question that is more specific to that school. It could be one or two questions. It could be whatever format they want, but it's usually more specific to that school. So my advice for the secondary is to research each school that you're applying for that you plan to fill out a secondary for. And from there, you want to convey why their school, why that specific school and why no other school. So you kind of have to prepare for that. So I use my time in between submitting my primary and getting the secondary to look at the schools and really say, okay, I love this um, research project that you guys worked on, or I love this opportunity that you guys have that I don't have at another school. So research and get that information in there. Then the last portion is hopefully you get to the interview, so they call you when they're like, oh my gosh, you're great, you're amazing. Woohoo, we wanna know more about you. At this point, I know that I started freaking out because I was looking at my grades and my MCAT, I'm like, oh my gosh, ooh, I don't know how this is gonna look. But you have to also remember that if you got to the interview portion, they see something in you. Like, schools have thousands of applicants and sometimes they only take hundreds of interviews. So the interview process means that they saw something in you and they just wanna learn more. Now, the biggest difference is, I know because of COVID times, they're doing a lot of virtual interviews, so that's gonna be a little bit harder because usually the interview is a chance that you get to really interact with people at the school, get the vibe, get the aura. So that is just something that is new and I don't really have too much experience in that, but I can get you know experience from my peers and see what they say and get back to you guys with that. But the interview is also something that you want to prepare for. And then after your interview, usually four to six weeks later, you'll get a response. It will either be, yes, you're accepted, maybe you're, so you're waitlisted, or a no. Now, the only exception to this is if you applied really early and you got an interview in like August or September, because the earliest that a school can accept you or give you an acceptance is October 15th of whatever year it is. So if you applied super, super early, you won't hear anything until then, but if you applied like, and you got your interview, during like the September, October months, within four to six weeks, you will hear an answer. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that it was informative and I hope that it was clear. And I hope that after you liked and subscribed and shared with your friends, that you enjoyed your daily dose of my life. All right, bye guys.